Mess Spankop from Kaiser Power Electronics here, and this is the world's weirdest microwave oven. Well, just look at that. This globe, the box, the color, the whole thing. Is this really a microwave oven? Yes, it is. It is from Husqvarna. This is the model called Cupol, which is uh, yeah, Swedish for a uh, half sphere, uh, as we can see, which really is the main part of the whole design. This was designed by a Swedish designer called Carl Arne Breger in 1969, when Husqvarna really tried to push the microwave oven out to the European market, and they really did fail as the market wasn't ready until the 80s in Europe, as the American market had picked up much earlier, it didn't go so well in Europe. But with the iconic design of the microwave oven that Husqvarna came with, this became something special that you could have in your kitchen. So let's take a closer look at the unit. Now, it wasn't just clickbait that I said this came from a weapons factory, because it actually comes from the Husqvarna Wappenfabriks AB in Sweden. And Wappenfabriks is a uh, yeah, Husqvarna weapons factory. Uh, Husqvarna is a uh, yeah, what do you call it, ancient uh, weapons manufacturer, but they also did appliances like this that originally came from the American uh, defense industry. So it was quite normal that, or it does make sense that this has been manufactured by a weapons factory in Sweden, uh, considering its early age. Um, now we can see here that it is a microwave oven, uh, the type number 550 01 05 and it's number 5210. It is meant for 220 volt AC at 50 hertz um, and needs a fusing of 10 amps. Now it's quite interesting that it actually states the effect that it consumes which is 1.5 kilowatt but the microwave effect is 0 0.7 kilowatt and at 2.45 gigahertz. It also stated that it has to be grounded and it contains a high voltage power supply. Here at the front panel it has a little gate here which I think is the timer that you could set it for 0 to 10 minutes and you would do it on the dial that is missing here. There is also a little LED lamp over here that is unfortunately broken and you have a start push button. Now the microwave um, yeah, compartment itself is underneath the shiny lid and it is on this plastic disc that you have your microwave effect. So it will be interesting to see how the magnetron is placed uh, underneath uh, in order to yeah, radiate up into this dome and have the microwave rays uh, yeah, going all over the place to heat up the food. Now this comes from a whole other era of serviceable uh, electronic equipment, so check this out. I took the two screws out here in the front and the unit just opens up nicely, just like that. Everything readily available for repla replacement or repair. And just look at that whole uh, setup with the funnel, the shielding, the huge magnets running the large copper jacket around here. The magnetron sits uh, loosely in the middle and this magnetic thing around here seems to have been glued at some point but has now broken. There's the filament transformer for the magnetron. There is a uh, lid switch for the uh, detecting that the lid is open as to not start. Down here we have a yeah, service switch for the whole uh, unit being opened. There's a cooling fan sitting over here. And the, the dial that is here, as we can see here, as I say I want to go to six minutes, now there is a red stripe indicating that. And let us just see uh, the electronics from the other side here. As we can see, the dial here has a little uh, pulling wire, which removes a uh, yeah, black ribbon here that goes in front of the orange part, indicating the time setting. And as this is uh, adjusted this way, it's going down to zero. And as it is moved all the way over here, 
we are able to actually yeah push the end switch here which is how it starts and stops because how is this actually moving well we have a little gear motor sitting down here so it's actually just a gear driving the hand controlled um, dial here and moving up touching an end switch that is the timing part of this microwave oven over here we have the uh, main high voltage power supply which is a nice laminated c core or two c cores and we have a multiplier with the diodes sitting here there is the uh, yeah microwave oven capacitor used for the level shifting uh, uh, high voltage power supply and this is the output high voltage wire which has broken off of the magnetron. Not quite sure where that would be connected. It's a rather short wire considering that it would have to be uh, opened like that. Over on the control circuit side there's really not that much to see. It uh, seems to be a surveillance of a few um, switches here and there. Uh, a few relays, some decoupling capacitors, uh, fuses, and the low voltage power supply is most likely just for the uh, LED indication or something like that. Very simple unit, but that is any microwave oven today. Uh, only the one with electronic high voltage power supplies have a bit more sophisticated electronics in them. So let's take a closer look at the magnetron itself. With the magnetron removed from its uh, wave guide here, we can see there is a deepening or a little dome in here as well. And there is uh, a ceramic jacket around the output of the magnetron. Now, I'm not quite sure if this just emits all around in itself uh, in an omnidirectional way, or it actually has an output port pointing directly towards the, um, the plastic plate itself. But maybe it is just a, an omnidirectional uh, radiation that is just bouncing all around until it finds its way out the plastic uh, part here. We can also see uh, there is two temperature sensors on the uh, magnetron's uh, cooling jacket in order to have some redundancy so you don't have it fail from one failing sensor. So let's see if we can get a little bit uh, further down into the magnetron. It is a nice heavy... Um, copper cooling jacket that we have here a lot of fins on it and a piece of uh, solid cover sheet uh, on the inside the magnetron sits in some silver conductive silver paint as you can see here we have the output terminal and up here we have the filament connections uh, ceramically insulated and we have the vacuum suction port from when it was manufactured. So this is as much as I'm going to take this magnetron apart simply due to I'm not I simply do not know how or yeah, dangerous it is to uh, breathe any of the dust that comes from this. The other part of the cooling jacket here you can see that there is a lot of detail done to shielding off uh, microwave ra radiation from uh, going outside the um, yeah, the working chamber and it also has another metal grid sitting in here of this dome so let's get the funnel out and look at the inside of that the plastic cover was pretty brittle so that simply broke off when I tried to r remove it now the inside that is rather interesting because I got no idea why it has this what looks like a dipole antenna. I do not know much about radar technology, so I hope somebody else does. So leave a comment if you know why is there what looks like a dipole antenna inside the waveguide of a microwave oven. Also there seems to be these ceramic uh, resonators being glued into a place here and there. 
maybe that is to, I don't know, tune the cavity for a best possible spreading of the um, microwaves. But yeah, leave a comment about that too if you know that. I hope you enjoyed the teardown of this uh, Web Factory microwave oven from Husqvarna. And I hope that someone can tell me what is this? What is it doing in there? So until next time, see ya.